Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this episode, I'll be focusing on the process known as chain elongation, also known as fatty acid synthesis. Now, central to chain elongation and fatty acid synthesis is the multi-enzyme complex known as fatty acid synthase, which is illustrated here. Now, there are two key players within the complex, and these include acyl carrier protein, abbreviated to ACP, and the amino acid cysteine. Now, both ACP and cysteine possess a thiofunctional group, circled in white. As you will soon see, the presence of these two thiofunctional groups is crucial to the manufacturing process. Now, before chain elongation can begin, fatty acid synthase needs to undergo a number of preparatory steps, the first of which involves the attachment of a two-carbon unit from acetyl-CoA to the thiol functional group located on the ACP component of fatty acid synthase. Now, this acetyl-CoA originated from the matrix of mitochondria, and transferred across into the cytosol via the citrate malate shuttle system. So just to recap, during this first preparatory step, the two carbon units found on the acetyl-CoA are transferred to the thiol functional group located on the ACP component of fatty acid synthase. You may also have noticed that during this process, the hydrogen that was attached to the sulfur that made up the thiol functional group that was attached to the ACP has now migrated to the sulfur atom that made up the original acetyl-CoA. This generates coenzyme A, while the two carbons that were originally attached to that sulfur have now migrated to the sulfur attached to ACP. Recall how these two carbons are derived from the name known as acetyl, at the acetyl meaning two carbon atoms. So this ACP is now called acetyl ACP, which in short means that the ACP has a two carbon unit attached to it. Now next, these same two carbons are then transferred to the cysteine component of fatty acid synthase while the hydrogen that was initially attached to the thiol functional group within cysteine has migrated to the ACP component, regenerating the thiol functional group. Now there's one more thing that needs to occur during this preparatory phase, and it involves a molecule known as malonyl-CoA. Now you may recall that malonyl-CoA is produced during the commitment step, now, this malonyl-CoA undergoes the same initial process as seen previously with acetyl-CoA. Note how the green colored carbon within the molecule originated from the bicarbonate anion during the commitment step. Please refer to my video on the commitment step if you need further clarification on this point. So the three carbons from the melanol-CoA are transferred and attached to the ACP component, resulting in the formation of melanol ACP and yet another coenzyme A. It is at this stage that the manufacturing of the fatty acid through chain elongation can begin. Two carbon units at a time are transferred from the ACP component to the cysteine component, resulting in an increase in chain length by two carbons. The remaining carbon, represented in green, is incorporated into a carbon dioxide molecule. Now this carbon dioxide molecule then reacts with water to produce the bicarbonate anion, which is used during the commitment step to generate another malonyl-CoA. By combining the bicarbonate anion with acetyl-CoA, In the next chain elongation, another melanol-CoA produced from the commitment step is added to ACP in a similar fashion to what was observed during the first chain elongation. 
This results in a further two carbons added to the fatty acid chain and another molecule of CO2 being expelled. The process then repeats again, extending the carbon fatty acid chain on the cysteine residue by a further two carbons and eliminating another CO2 molecule. So, so far we've undergone three chain elongations which has resulted in the production of a eight carbon fatty acid tail which is attached to the cysteine residue. During the fourth chain elongation the process repeats again and we extend the carbon chain attached to the cysteine residue by a further two carbons and this results in the elimination of yet another CO2 molecule. This whole process continually repeats extending the fatty acid chain by two carbon units at a time until a 16 carbon fatty acid is produced. It is at this point that the chain elongation process is terminated. The C16 fatty acid is then cleaved off to give the saturated fatty acid known as palmitic acid which then combines three units at a time with glycerol to produce triacylglycerols often abbreviated into TAGs. Finally some of you might be wondering why it takes seven chain elongations as opposed to eight to create the C16 fatty acid. The reason for this is that the whole process begins with a pre-existing two carbon acetyl group derived from acetyl-CoA which was transported from the mitochondrial matrix and into the cytosol. Based on this we only need to extend the chain by an extra 14 carbons in order to get to that magic number 16. Each chain elongation extends the fatty acid chain by 2, 2 into 14 gives 7 chain elongations. Now in my next episode I'll be focusing on the four steps that occur within each separate chain elongation process. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally if you found this presentation to be useful please click like. Thank you for listening.